guys, I'm really, really excited about this video I'm going to share with you right now, where I interviewed Lisa, who is the CEO and founder of Visionating. She is a coach, so she has a lot of good insight. If you're looking for some direction in your business, you're a small business owner, entrepreneur, or maybe even an artist that needs to get your head on straight with regard to um, the businessy side of things, then stick around, watch this video. I hope you get something out of it. If you have any questions, comments for me or for Lisa, leave them in the comment section. Enjoy. Hi everybody, I'm Keisha Martine, I'm with Venus Springs, and today we have a guest speaker, Lisa, with Vision Eating. And she's gonna share with us a little bit about uh, the group that she started and uh, how she believes it can help people out there that are entrepreneurs and have bigger dreams. Hi Keisha, my name is Lisa Stratanovich, and I am the Velocity Detective with Vision Eating. I love seeing professional practice owners that have enough passion, drive, and belief in themselves that they've been able to launch their own practice. But it, I hate it when I see that they are flying by the seat of their pants. They don't know where their cash is going, which sales are profitable, and all while spending way too much time at the office. You know someone like that, right? <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, I'm on a mission to help these business owners understand that they don't have to give up their dream business, mm -hmm. that they can actually make a, a really good uh, living and have personal time. So was there anything in your personal experience that inspired you to go down this path? Yes, um, my background is that I'm a CPA, mm -hmm. which meant that I spent years in college and then tons and tons of time studying for the CPA exam. And I did that while uh, raising a daughter, working full time, and going to school part time, which meant that my personal life balance was just wacky, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't get me wrong, I understand that everybody's is kind of crazy, especially mm -hmm. right now. It was a little topsy turvy for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I'd had a, a path, a vision, and uh, some goals to be set, then it wouldn't have been just by the seat of my pants. It actually mm -hmm. would have been more uh, productive along mm -hmm. the way. I can imagine you struggled with quite a bit. I mean, as far as like emotionally, right? Emotionally, yes. I was in college mm -hmm. and uh, my daughter was about three or four years old and uh, she was just starting out in gymnastics. Such a cute little thing tumbling all around. But I had always grown up being completely a straight A student. Mm -hmm. And that was part of my self identity. And I realized about two thirds of the way through one of my classes that unless I missed my daughter's competition and I got less than three hours of sleep, <laughs> right? Uh, there was no way I was going to be able to make an A in this class. And I decided that at that point that I was going to, instead of getting the A, go ahead and uh, support my daughter and be there for her. Mm -hmm. But that meant for me emotionally, I mean, that just tore me up, yeah. right? And I think, again, if I'd had someone that told me, okay, well, you don't, you don't have to to be defined by that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And especially, like, I think that way back, part of that definition came from my parents. Well, of course. They were always very pro education. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, because it came easy to me, I was defined by them as this very good mm -hmm. with school. But emotionally, that was really, really hard on me. And yes, emotions, uh, would you agree with me, are, are like one of the really key pieces of of being right yeah but but you've got to balance that out right with with the mind and the spirit mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. for me that's that's i think the very first part of where i was under being able to understand that balance and not only that but understand that if i did have a path rather than just letting it happen mm -hmm. then it is much more productive okay Awesome. So what do you feel like you have to offer entrepreneurs that might be in that space where they have big dreams, but they feel like they can't do it, or, you know, they just don't have certain knowledge in terms of maybe a business plan or the monetary part of it. What are your thoughts about that? Well, let me, let me give you an example of Marco. When he first came to me, he had a problem. He was just spending all of his time in the business. They had been in business for 33 years in an architect uh, firm 
-hmm. and he was working six, seven hour, uh, six or seven days a week, but doing everything by hand. Mm -hmm. Um, his sales figures weren't in the system until at least four or five months after the sale was done. Oh, wow. uh, he was processing payroll, mm -hmm. um, but he had to like hand key in all of the hours and then print out the check. And so all of his time was being spent just doing all of these manual processes. Mm -hmm. And all he had to do was see that there were other ways to do the same things mm -hmm. and that instead of taking seven hours to process payroll it only took 20 minutes by mm -hmm. implementing processes and technology mm -hmm. right and the technology was something he actually was already paying for mm -hmm. just didn't understand how to use it mm -hmm. so once we got that in place now he's able to spend uh three months this year outside of the state so now he's able to work remotely, mm -hmm. right? Which how awesome is that in these kind of conditions, right? Right. right. Uh, and he's gained back two entire days out mm -hmm. of his his um, whole work day. Mm -hmm. On top of that, they've been there. We're not even all the way through the year yet, and they're showing almost 1.5 times their profit from last year. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're making more money and having less time right mm -hmm. and basically there's three critical steps that you need to think about when you're thinking about uh trying to get back time for yourself mm -hmm. as well as growing your own business mm -hmm. and one of those is making sure that you have really good reporting that's where marco was lacking mm -hmm. and part of the way to get that is through technology and systems Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have to kind of look at your costs mm -hmm. and make sure that you're spending your money mm -hmm. on the right things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and one of the biggest ways that you can make sure that you do that is to have a good spending plan. Mm -hmm. And then that leads into what areas of growth you want to have for your value and vision. Mm -hmm. So you really need to understand why you're in business in the first place. Mm -hmm. I assume that part of it is to make a profit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Only because right? I have to. <laughs> if but, I could afford it, I'd be a humanitarian and just, you know, help people all the time. But, you know, not uh, everybody born rich, so. Um, so uh, part of it is to make a profit, yes. But what what are the other reasons that you want to be in business? Mm -hmm. you, mentioned yourself that it was because you have a heart mm -hmm. right, to, to help and serve others mm -hmm. and you have to balance that out with how much time and profit that you're going to make in mm -hmm. the end mm -hmm. right so you really need to focus on these three things right making sure you have good reporting making mm -hmm. sure that your costs aren't creeping up on you and that you're taking correct uh, growth opportunities in order to find velocity in your mm -hmm. business Okay. And so are there any particular, I guess, clientele that you maybe gear your services towards? Well, my ideal client would be someone in the professional services, mm -hmm. someone, uh, a doctor, veterinarian, another coach of sorts, right? Mm -hmm. Someone that uh, provides a service mm -hmm. to uh, the general public. That's my ideal client. And one that maybe to themselves is spending is saying, oh my gosh, I, I really want some more personal time back in my life. Mm -hmm. And how do I, it's not just a balance of, of work-life balance, right? right? Um, it needs to be more of an integration into your life because we're so passionate about what we do. Yeah. And it, it, it overlaps all the time mm -hmm. everywhere, uh -huh. right? Totally. And that's, that's an incredible thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but how do you make sure that you spend enough time doing the businessy stuff mm -hmm. right, without becoming overwhelmed and without taking too much time away from those other things that you're also passionate about? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I can definitely see how that would be helpful. So is there anything that you would say to anybody out there that would 
feel like uncertain, I guess, about like the financial part of things, like the accounting part? I mean, I think you kind of answered that question, but could you, could you give us a little bit more detail about that? Oh, well, first of all, you definitely need to have a really, really good relationship with professionals that mm-hmm. offer you wisdom, that empower you to find your riches. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, I I have a little term, I call it, it's the power connections, Mm -hmm. right? So professionals offering uh, wisdom Mm -hmm. to empower your richness. And it's not just your dollars of richness, right? right? Yeah, I understand. It's it's Mm -hmm. the the whole picture. When you're talking about your business or even your financial well-being overall, Mm -hmm. that needs to include your CPA, Mm -hmm. your legal counsel, so your lawyer, a good relationship with your banker is also kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And then uh, maybe your wealth advisor and your insurance agent, Mm -hmm. all right? Those people, when you can surround yourself with those, that team of power connections, then you have enough wise counsel that you are surrounded with that you don't have to go out and search the internet and not know which one is the right one to use, sure. right? Because sure. there's so much information. On the, on the accounting and, and bookkeeping and financial side, right? First of all, lean on your CPA, mm-hmm. right? Uh, now, sometimes your CPA is just there to do your tax return. Right. So uh, in that case, you might want to also have a business coach because mm-hmm. As business coaches, we can act as a liaison, if you will, Mm -hmm. between you as the business owner Mm -hmm. and your CPA. Sometimes the CPA doesn't have a language skill, so there's a language barrier. Yeah, yeah. You who don't know how to ask the the question in the right way, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Business coach can help be that intermediary Mm -hmm. that can help build that relationship better. Yeah. Yeah. But I just think it's so exciting to see you do this because I see it all the time with some of my clients that, you know, like I said earlier, they have big dreams that they just feel like they can't do it and they feel stuck in where they're at. Um, but you see the potential, you see the vision, you see the passion and it just breaks my heart to see them, you know, struggle, um, trying to like do a side hustle and then, you know, still put food on the table. And so I think it's just brilliant that you put this together. So I really appreciate that. And hopefully, you know, others out there will hear more about this and, and, check check out your services I think I think it's especially cool for like artist types you know that are you know just super scattered and like oh I just want to like do my thing and oh what numbers what what am I supposed to do with that like I don't even know (laughs) oh absolutely so um the other side of that my husband uh, has a recording studio he's in the music industry so I completely understand that artist side of it Mm -hmm. and I do understand well even with the service industry right I am I am deeply passionate about financial literacy and Mm -hmm. making sure that you as the business owner understand more than just your passion right Mm -hmm. because in order to make a profit uh, we, we've got to actually be business people. We've got to ha- put that business hat on mm-hmm. and same with the starving artist. Yeah. And I have that music side <laughs> right now. I married it. Mind you, I cannot <laughs> bury a tune, but because I've got that side, I really understand that side of it too. Yeah. And sure. that you do sometimes feel scattered and you don't want to, but when you when you really understand how exciting and you can you can channel that passion mm-hmm. for music or art or your services right into running your business and sometimes you might not want to do the thing uh for me it's uh, bookkeeping and accounting and all that that's fine right one i have the skills and two i've got the passion for it, if you will, right? Marketing, Oof. me and marketing don't like doing it, but I like the results. Yeah. And so I do it anyways. Mm-hmm. Same with working out. Don't mm-hmm. like doing it, but I like the results. Yeah. You could so, say the same thing about therapy. <laughs> what about you? What's your one thing that you don't like doing? 
on the, working on the business? That's a good question. I would have to go with dealing with the insurance side of things, you know, um, the insurance claims and all that. I mean, I've got a pretty good practice management system, but it's really a lot to keep up with anyway. Like, you know, the reconciliation, like if a claim doesn't go through or you got to get on the phone with the insurance company and it's like, I need another person to do that. And I can't do that because I can't afford to have another person do it. You know, I don't mind doing like the bookkeeping and like keep track, track of expenses and whatnot, but it's, it's those little things that just build up over time. And it just, it's just, it kind of weighs heavy on you. They absolutely do. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's marketing. Mm -hmm. So one of my growth goals and is to uh, have enough profit in order to outsource that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I am driven now, not just passionate, but driven yeah. to have enough sales to outsource that so that I can spend time doing the things that I want to, yes. whether that's uh, additional coaching, right? Mm -hmm. Bringing mm -hmm. on another client or, hey, I really do like doing the business plan for my own business, right? Yep. And so I can spend more time doing that and mm -hmm. looking, okay, well, where are my next growth opportunities going to be, mm -hmm. right? If I can outsource that marketing. Mm -hmm. So same with you, potentially, mm -hmm. right? Uh, how many more widgets do you have to create? How many more uh, yep. clients do you have to bring in at mm -hmm. what price mm -hmm. in order to be able to outsource that so sure. that you and now move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so what about residual income? You know, is that any, do you guys talk about that at all in your coaching? Well, uh, well of course, because that's another growth opportunity. Yeah. Passive. Well, passive and residual are, are relatively close. Okay. Right? See, um, I don't know anything about numbers. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good conversation. You're learning already. Um, it's just another growth opportunity, right? Uh -huh. So if you write a book uh -huh. and you get royalties, uh -huh. right? You get the, the effort uh, to write it and then market it, and then you will get residual income as time goes on, uh -huh. right? Um, is that a growth opportunity that you want to spend your time on writing, uh -huh. right? And are you good at writing? Uh -huh. And if not, then... Um, I've discovered that there are ghost writers. Okay. Um, I didn't know that. So, um, just I like I talked to you about that. Cause I'm almost yeah. done with a book that I started and I need help. <laughs> but I've got so many balls in the air right now. So, so you, you need to have, because the, that balls in the air, mm -hmm. you need to prioritize them. Yeah, I know. I don't know. How and, you know. And, <laughs> I'm really bad about that. <laughs> um, well, that's okay. So, Prioritization. First of all, you have to start out with why. Mm -hmm. Why are you in business? Yeah. And what do you want to accomplish with this business? Mm -hmm. Right. And then second, prioritize those things that have to happen in your business mm -hmm. that are are concerning. Yeah. Right. And one of them might be, okay, I want to write a book. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, because I think I want residual income. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then let's walk through what that means for you because it's going to take time away mm -hmm. from something. Something, yep. Something's right? got to give. Yeah, absolutely. Something's got to give. Absolutely. It, maybe that, maybe you're going to end up with a B in your class, mm -hmm. or maybe you're going to miss your daughter's competition, or maybe you're not going to be able to take on as many clients. Yeah. Because you want to write this book. Mm -hmm. Now, if in the long run, your why behind the book is bigger than just the residual income, mm -hmm. okay? My why behind a book might look like I want to reach more people than I can just by being myself because mm -hmm. I can only do so many one-on-one -on -one conversations yeah. in a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If, I, if I wrote a book, then you and you and you would be able to have the same information in a mm -hmm. concise format that was maybe better for your budget mm -hmm. and I could reach so many more. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and that's one of my things. I want to reach lots and lots and lots of people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so maybe I write a book and that's my real reason. Yes. It's also to have residual income. Yes. 
right? Mm -hmm. Same reason for maybe an online course, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, take the same pieces of information that I do during my one-on-one -on -one sessions, mm -hmm. but turn it into a, a course that more people can take at once, or maybe group coaching, something to that effect, right? Right, right, right. So, um, let, let's think about the artist. Maybe they paint one thing, mm -hmm. right? But then they can make prints of it mm -hmm. and then that can give them residual right. income, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Uh, where the effort was put in at the front end, mm -hmm. but then the money comes in over time because right. we have different ways of getting the same piece of information out there in different formats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I really appreciate your time, Lisa. This has been so cool learning from you. Is there anything you want to tell the audience about how to get in touch with you or um, as far as like following you, like any kind of group or anything? Sure. So uh, my website is visionating.com, V-I-S-I-O-N-A-T-I-N-G.com. Mm -hmm. And I'm also on uh, Facebook and Instagram under Visionating or The Velocity Detective. Because I am finding your missing velocity in your business. Okay. That's exciting. Well, we're going to have to have another chat for sure. <laughs> I've got oh, way too many balls in the air right now. <laughs> well, I really appreciate your time and uh, we'll have to reconnect soon. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Keisha. My pleasure. Take care.